Good morrow, scholars. Welcome back to Stormfront, book one of the Dresden Files. Did I say that right? A scene on Psychway. Oh, yeah. Well, I mentioned that yesterday, not yesterday, the other day. I'm going to look up the show. I'm going to watch it. I think I would like it. Also, now that I've started reading this, I'm thinking about dressing up as the, the cover art for Halloween. If you guys have any suggestions, I still have my Luke Skywalker costume from Episode 7. Um, I still have that mechanic jumpsuit. I have half a mind to dress up as uh, Michael Myers. Uh, if you have any other ideas what would be good for Halloween, uh, please let me know. Uh, I've vowed to make this the best Halloween of my life. Even if I have to kill a hobo. Um, probably not something I should just say and record and upload. I don't really mean it. Uh, in fact, if the past 12 years are any indication, I'm just gonna stay home, read a book, Watch, uh, uh, watch some scary videos, and then go to bed. Anyway, we are in chapter 3, page 31. Missed it by that much. Well, actually, it is that much, but you know what I meant. Gentlemen, Johnny, and then Johnny. I can't speak. Johnny Marcom didn't look like the sort of man who would have my legs broken or my jaw wired shut. Ah, oh, that sounds painful. I can feel it. Ah, oh, it bothers me more than the tentacles from the last book. His salt and pepper hair was cut short, and there were lines from sun and smiling etched into the corners of his eyes. His eyes were the green of well-worn dollar bills. Huh. It really paints a picture. He seemed more like a college football coach, good-looking, tan, athletic, and enthusiastic. The impression was reinforced by the men he kept with him. Cujo Hendricks hulked like an all-pro player who had been ousted for extreme un unnecessary roughness. Sorry. Cujo got in the car again, glowered at me in the rearview mirror, then pulled out into the street, driving slowly toward my office. The steering wheel looked tiny and delicate in his huge hands. That's why I get small cars, because it's hilarious to look at. It looked almost like, uh, wait, 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 oh, sorry, I missed a couple of things. I made a mental note. Do not let Cujo put his hands around your throat or hand. It looked oh, almost like one of them could manage it. big dude. The radio was playing, but as I got in the car, it fouled up uh, squealing feedback out over the speakers. Hendrix scowled and thought about it for a second. Maybe he had to relay the message through his second brain or something. Then he reached out and fiddled with the knobs before finally turning the radio off. At this rate, I hoped the car would make it all the way to my office. Let's see, I don't remember the voice I used for it. I guess it's really my game touch. I don't really have a vocal range. Mr. Dresden, Markham said, smiling. I understand that you work for the police department from time to time. They throw the occasional tidbit my way, I agree. Hey, Hendrix, you should really wear your seatbelt. Statistics say you're 50 or 60% safer. Cujo growled at me in the rearview mirror again, and I beamed at him. Smiling always seemed to annoy people more than actually insulting them. Or maybe I just have an annoying smile. I agree with that first sentiment, not but never mind. Marcone seemed somewhat put off by my attitude. Maybe I was uh, supposed to be holding my, ha my hand, but I never really liked Francis Ford Chipola. What? And I didn't have a godfather. Wait, what? I do have a godmother, and she is inevitably, perhaps, a fairy. But that's another story. Mr. Dresden, he said, 
How much would it cost to retain your services? That made me wary. What would someone like Marcone want me for? My standard fee is $50 an hour plus travel expenses, I told him. But it can vary depending on what you need done. Marcone nodded along with my sentences as if encouraging me to speak. He incurred... or er, what? What? I have no idea where I was. He wrinkled up his face as if carefully considering what he would say and taking my well-being into account with grandfather, grandfatherly concern. How much would it uh, set me back to have you not investigate something? You want me to, uh, you want to pay me to not do something. Let's say I p pay your standard fee that comes out to 1400 a day, right? 1200 uh, actually. I corrected him. He beamed at me. An honest man is a rare treasure. 1200 a day. Let's say I pay you for two weeks' worth of work, Mr. Tristan, and you take some time off. Go catch a few movies, get some extra sleep, that sort of thing. I eyed him. And for more than a thousand dollars a day, you want me to... Do nothing, Mr. Tristan. A smile. smiled. Nothing at all. Just relax and put your feet up. And stay out of Detective Murphy's way. Aha! Marcone didn't want me looking into Tommy Tom's murder. Interesting. I looked out the window and squinted my eyes, as though thinking about it. I've got the money with me, Marcone said. Cash on the spot. I'll trust you to fulfill your end of the deal, Mr. Dresden. You come highly recommended for your honesty. I feel like that's not true. Hmm. I don't know. John. I'm kind of busy to be accepting any more accounts right now. What? The car door was almost er, the car was almost to my office building. The car door, there we go, was still unlocked. I hadn't worn my seatbelt either, just in case I needed to throw the door open and jump out. See how I think ahead? It's that wiz wizardly in intellect. I was going to say intelligence and paranoia. I would do the same thing though, but that's because. I'm a weird person. Marcone's smile faltered. His expression became earnest. Mr. Dresden, I am quite eager to establish a positive working relationship with you. If it's the money, I can offer you more, let's say double your usual fee. He steepled his hands in front of him as he talked, half turning toward me. My goodness, I kept expecting him to tell me to uh, go out there and win one for the Gipper. I don't know what that means. He smiled. How does that sound? It isn't the money, John, I told him. I lazily locked my eyes onto his. I just don't think it's going to work out. To my surprise, he didn't look away. Those who deal in magic learn to see the world in a slightly different light than anyone else. You gain a perspective you never had considered before. A way of thinking that would just never have occurred to you um, without exposure to the things a wizard sees and hears. When you look into someone's eyes, you see them in that other light. And for just a second, they see you in the same way. Marcone and I looked at one another. He was a soldier, a warrior, behind that relaxed smile and fatherly manner. He was going to get what he wanted and he was going to get it in the most efficient way possible. He was a dedicated man, dedicated to his goals, dedicated to his people. He never let fear affect him. He made a living on human misery and suffering, peddling in drugs and flesh and stolen goods. But he took steps to minimize that suffering because it simply was the most efficient means of running his business. He was furious over Tommy Tom's death, a cold and practical kind of fury that his rightful dominion had been invaded and challenged. He intended to find those responsible and deal with them in his own way, and he didn't want the police interfering. He had killed before, and would again, and it would mean nothing more to him than a business transaction, than paying for groceries in the checkout line. What? I feel like I missed something in there. It was a dry and cool place inside Gentleman Johnny Marcone, except for one dim corner, there, hidden away from his everyday thoughts, there looked a secret shame. I couldn't quite see what it was, but I knew that, 
somewhere in the past, there was something that he would give anything to undo, would spill blood to erase. It was from that dark place that he drew his resolve, his strength. That's interesting. That was the way I saw him when I looked inside. I saw his pretenses and defenses. And I was, on some instinctual level, certain that he had been aware of what I would see if I looked. That he had uh, deliberately met my gaze, knowing what he would give away. That was his purpose in getting me alone. He wanted to take a peek at my soul. He wanted to see what sort of man I was. When I look into someone's eyes, into their soul, their innermost being, they can see mine in return the things I had done, the things I was willing to do, the things I was capable of doing. Most people who did that got really pale, uh, at least. One woman had passed out entirely. I didn't know what they saw when they looked in there. It wasn't a place I poked around much myself. Johnny Marcone wasn't like other people who had seen my soul. He didn't even blink an eye. He just looked and assessed, and after the moment had passed, he nodded at me as though he understood something. I got the uncomfortable impression he had duped me, that he had found out more about me than I had about him. The first thing I felt was anger at being manipulated. Anger that, uh, or what? Anger, and then, yeah, okay. Anger that he should presume to soul gaze upon me. Just a second later, I felt scared to death of this man. I had looked on his soul, and it had been as solid and barren as a stainless steel refrigerator. It was more than unsettling. He was strong, inside, savage, and merciless without being cruel. He had a tiger's soul. All right then, he said smoothly, as though nothing had happened. I won't try to force my offer on you, Mr. Dresden. The car was slowing down as it approached my, uh, my building, and Hendrix pulled out. Uh, um, or pulled over in front of it. But let me make, uh, uh, wait, sorry, again. But let me offer you some advice. He had dropped the father talking to me, the son act and spoke in a calm, patient voice. Hmm? If you don't charge for it. Thank goodness for wisecracks. I was too rattled to have said anything intelligent. Marcon almost smiled. I think you'll be happier if you come down with the flu for a few days. This business that Detective Murphy has asked you to look into doesn't need to be dragged out into the light. You won't like what you see. It's on my side of the fence. Just let me deal with it, and it won't ever trouble you. Are you threatening me? I asked him. I didn't think he was. I didn't want him to know that. It would have helped if my voice hadn't been shaking. No, he said frankly. I have too much respect for you to resort to something like that. They say that you're the real thing, Mr. Dresden. A real magus. They also say I'm as nutty as a fruitcake. I choose which they I listen to very carefully, Marcone said. Think about what I've said, Mr. Dresden. I do, I do not think our respective lines of work need uh, overlap often. I would as soon not make an enemy of you over this matter. I clenched my jaw over my fear and spat words out at him. Quick and hard. You don't want to make an enemy of me, Marco. That wouldn't be smart. That wouldn't be smart at all. He narrowed his eyes at me, lazy and relaxed. He could meet my eyes by then without fear. We had taken measure of one another. One another. It would not happen in such a way again. You really should try to be more polite, Mr. Dresden, he said. It's good for business. I didn't give him an answer to that. I didn't have one that wouldn't sound frightened or stupidly macho. Instead, I told him, If you ever lose your car keys, give me a call. Don't try offering me money or threats again. Thanks for the ride. He watched me, his expression never changing, as I got out of the car and shut the door. Hendrix pulled out and drove away after giving me one last dirty look. I had soul-gazed on several people before. It wasn't the, soul, the sort of thing uh, you forgot. I had never run into someone like that, someone so cool and controlled. Even the other practitioners I had met gazes with had not been that way. None of them had simply assessed me like a column of numbers and filed it away for reference in future equations. That is, that is actually a pretty horrifying sentiment. That's got to be important later. 
Also, my hip hurt, so I decided to sit down for today. Where was it? I stuck my hands in my pocket, in the pockets of my duster, and shivered as the wind hit me. I was a wizard throwing around real magic how I might do myself. I was not afraid of big men and big cars. I do not get rattled by corpses blasted from life by magic more intense than anything I could manage. Really. Honestly. But those duller bill colored eyes, backed by that cool and nearly passionless soul, had me shaking as I took the stairs back up to my office. I had been stupid. He had surprised me, and the sudden intimacy of the soul gaze had startled and frightened me. All added together, it caused me to fall apart, throwing threats at him like a frightened school kid. Marcone was a predator. He practically smelled my fear. If he got to thinking I was weak, I had a feeling that polite smile and fatherly facade would vanish as thoroughly and as quickly as it appeared. What a rotten first impression. Oh well. At least I was going to be on time for my appointment. Okie dokie. That was chapter 3. Would you have taken the money and then just kept telling Officer Murphy that, like you said before, you can't dig up anything on how one would go about this because you literally cannot without, you know, what he said in the last chapter to himself. No, it was the chapter before that. I, I almost feel like I would have taken the money. But at the same time, I don't think I would have liked it, so maybe I wouldn't have. I don't trust people at the best of times. Hmm. That's a good question for the day. Would you have taken the money? Anyway, before I find something to get distracted on, like my lightsabers, uh, I still haven't decided uh, what else to read. So I may end up just reading the first chapter of Twilight, and then tomorrow I'll read the last chapter. I don't know yet. Hmm. But at the same time, I kind of want to see what happens next, but I don't like reading um, books on the channel without you guys, so um, there's that. Hmm. Okay, I'm only going to have the one video up today, um, and here's why. Uh, I mentioned before, I think, uh, Mia and I are working on our book, finally, like we're actively typing up uh, things, and uh, I want to have at least at least eight pages done today. Um, I have about three and a half or four um, done already for one chapter. Uh, I want to at least get to eight pages. And Like I said, let me know if you have any ideas you would like to see um, us implement. If you have any characters that you think would be interesting, I'd love to take a look. If you have ideas for plot lines, that would also be helpful. Uh, if I take anything, I will give credit where credit is due. And until next time, goodbye everybody. Wish me luck because uh, this is like the first time I've like gone all out with the whole writing thing.